Hi guys, welcome to my very first What Sold video. Let's see what's sold. Hey everybody, how are you today? So we're doing our What Sold for the month of May. I do have a couple April thrown in there and there are a couple polos in here, which means be on the lookout for it. These are things that sell for a good amount of money versus like what you're actually spending on them. So we're going to talk about what I spent on them, what I made on them, um, how much they sold for, and um, a little bit of information about that. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys, especially those that are new to reselling. Um, my sales have not been super exciting um, up till now. I started doing this full time in April, of, um, like I mean January, of, January twenty eighth of this year. So it's only been a few months. February was really slow. March was a little better. April was really slow. May was really eh, in between, better than April. So it's improving. I know that eBay's been working on algorithm problems and all sorts of things, and there's been lots going on. And I'm just biding my time and hoping that things work out. Um, I've had a lot of technical issues lately um, with my phone and with my memory cards. And I had two memory cards with pictures on them corrupt, so I had to go through my whole inventory and redo all the pictures. We'll talk about that another time. Um, and I'm so I'm behind so far, like way behind right now. So I'm just working on things as I can. But I thought I would do this because this would be a little different. And I did do some haul videos that will be coming up later. So we're going to start with this and then we'll go from there. Yes, it's a different day because I don't get to finish anything in a day. That would just be ridiculous. But we are going to finish the video today. So, or at least we're going to try. <laughs> you may see me later in another outfit. Who knows? Um, but we're going to give it a try. So this is going to be the first item that sold. And I did have notes someplace, didn't I? Yeah, sure I did. I'm sure I did. Yes, I did. Aha. I did. Okay. So the very first item that sold is this Van Heusen, um, I'm going to look at my notes while I talk to you, um, Van Heusen shirt, um, and it cost me a whole dollar, and it sold for 15 that's what, what it was listed for, it, plus shipping, they were all in for $21, and I made a total of $13.04 after fees and paying for shipping. So the next item is this cute little Montgomery wooden rail card, car, car, rail car, it's a train car. Um, it's from the 1950s or 60s, I think the 60s, but it has lemonade on it. It cost me 27 cents at the little thrift store that I like to go to. Um, it was listed for $8.50 and sold for $8.50. Um, plus shipping, they were all in for doing math in my head, $14.50, and I made $7.80 after fees and paying for the shipping. The next item is a pair of Lucky Flats. These were, well, they were free because my daughter, they were my daughter's, so they're pre-owned by my daughter, but I mean, I paid for them originally, but they were listed for $15, and they sold for $15, plus shipping, all in for $26.50, and the um, after fees, uh, the the total that I earned was $14.50. I mean, $14.72, sorry. The next one, this is a little toy. It's called a bone shaker. It's a, um, a little like transformer truck. It opens up, there's a little skull inside. It's a little plastic thing. It cost me 44 cents. Um, it was listed for $12.50. It sold for $11. I accepted an offer. They were all in for $16.29, and at the end, I made, I didn't write it down, but let's figure, like around maybe $6, something like that, okay. This is a pair of American Eagle shorts, denim shorts, um, cutoffs. They were also my daughter, so zero in to them. Um, this did for 10, sold for 10, 16 all in, and I made $8.96 after fees. Um, and the reason I'm telling you what I make after after fees is because a lot of people just say, oh, I you know we sold it for 15. Well, that's not what you get after everything's done. So I think it's important for you to know, like there's fees. Sometimes I have some things were promoted. So the fees might have been higher. Um, the higher the price, the higher the fees. So it's always good to know kind of 
what the end result is, I think, um, going in. So you, you, you kind of get an idea of what it costs for you to pet buy it, what you're actually going to make on it. Um, and, you know, if it's worth your time, because this is a lot of time. So I'm trying to make it worth my time. But, you know, it's a process. Believe me, it's a process. <laughs> so anyway, this next little thing is also a toy. This was part of that farm lot that I bought. This is a new Ray forklift toy. Um, it's a little bit bigger than 164th, so I'm told, um, but it's still pretty small. Um, and it was 53 cents all in, listed for seven, and they paid seven. Um, and they paid um, at the end with shipping was $17, and I made $5.38. This cute little thing here was one of my bolos, and if you saw the bolo video that I posted, then you know what this is. This is a Carter's plush and it's a French bulldog and it was little it was a little bigger than that but it was like this big it wasn't very big it was like a baby toy um I paid 53 cents for it um it was listed for 70 and I accepted an offer for 50 dollars um and they sell for 65 70 dollars so um that's what they sell for I know it seems crazy but it is um, she was all in for 56 cents. She liked it very much, so I'm very glad about that. And at the end of the day, I made $38.67 on that. The next was a lot of horses, again, from the farm lot that I bought. Um, I'm all in for mm, maybe a couple dollars, all told. Um, it was like 53 cents for each group, so I put 53 cents. It might have been like a dollar six, whatever. But anyway, um, Listed for seven, sold for seven. They were all in for fifteen fifty with shipping, and I made eight dollars and seventeen cents. The next item is this Hiram Walker whiskey bottle. Um, this was really cool. Um, I, I this is the second bottle I've sold, um, and they both done pretty well. I mean, bread and butter well, but still, um, second bottle I've sold. So keep an eye out for bottles. Um, kind of look them up because some of them are worth money. Um, I paid five dollars and thirty five cents for it. Um, I listed it for 20, accepted an offer 15. They were all in for $36.50 with shipping, and I made $10.68 on it. Um, the next item was an Adrienne Papel skirt. This was all silk. It was three-quarter lengths. Um, I was in for about $6. I had actually purchased this from Salvation Army about a year and a half ago for... A Christmas costume we were going to use things for Christmas costumes so I bought a few items that, different colors that we could use for King's costumes and things for the Christmas play um, it ended up not getting used sat in a bag and I ended up listing it um, for $22 accepted an offer of 19 they were all in for 25 and I made $16.32 on it after fees fancy that right the next item was, again, from the farm lot. This was the corral, um, corral fencing that looked like wood. We were in for 53 cents, listed for 12, sold for nine. Um, I actually don't have the prices written down for this. Um, they were all in for probably about $15, and I'm gonna say I probably made about $10 on it after fees, based on just off the top of my head. This next one with the dachshund purse, I actually paid $1.27 for this, and um, we listed it for $19.99, and it sold for $19.99, um, which is great. And um, they were all in for $27 with shipping, and at the end of the day, I made about $18, I think. Um, they were in for $26, and it was about $8 with fees and the shipping, um, so... 18 18 18 dollars around maybe a little less okay the next item were billabong shirt shorts blah, blah, blah. um i got them for five and um at the salvation army and we sold um listed them for 22 and they sold for 18 um they were all in for 24 dollars and do math in my head sorry i should have written i had these all written down i thought i was done but um, so 19, so about $11, um, was the profit after fees and taxes and, and the cost of goods. 
So the next pa pair of joggers, this was Love Street Joggers. They were my daughter's again. So we're zero into it, listed for 15, sold for 12, uh, all in for $18. And so about $11 profit, maybe a little bit less, 10 something. Um, this item was the Patagonia shirt. This was a great find. Um, this was a vintage shirt. It was for fishing. It had like, had like mesh in the back under the flap. Very cool, pretty robin's egg blue. I paid $6.50 for it and we listed it for $47 and it sold for $47. Um, they were all in for $53 and after fees and um, shipping, it was, I, the profit was $31 and one cent and cost of goods. So how I figure out how much I made is I subtract what I paid for it. See that fly flying around? Buzz in my head. Uh, <laughs> a cost of goods, the, what I actually paid for shipping, because I do a flat, flat rate shipping on a lot of my stuff. Um, the only thing I don't is books because it's media mail. And then whatever my fees were, and if I um, paid extra like for advertising on it, then that would come out too. So I take all that out and then whatever's left is my um, profit. Um, so the next one is a Martha Stewart receiving blanket. Um, so I had two of these. I paid $5.34 for each of them. Um, and one was pink and one was yellow. So the pink one sold a while back um, for $40, which is what I listed it for. This one was also listed for $40 and sold for $40. But I thought because the pictures weren't very good in the beginning when I was first taking pictures, my lighting's very yellow and my pink one looked yellow and my yellow one looked yellow. And I thought somehow or another I had listed the pink one twice and I made a mistake because I had put pink in the title but it said yellow in the description and it was a typo on my part. So I gave the lady your money back. I apologized profusely that I'd made a mistake, that it was actually the yellow one that I had, not the pink one. And she wanted the yellow one. So I relisted it and gave it to her for $30 for the screw up that I made. So she paid 30 and um, she was all in for 36 and I made 21.45 off of it. So this next is another bolo, and this is actually something that sold in April, but I wanted to share it because it was pretty cool. I bought this set of coasters, so they look like they're scrimshaw, they're like carved, and then they stain over them to get that effect so you can see it. They're all tall ships, battleships from England. Um, I did a lot of research on these. These are from England, and they're very rare. And they're very confusing because some antique shops have them listed as being whalebone, which they are not. They're some kind of polymer or stone. They're very, very heavy. Whalebone would certainly not be this heavy. The, these babies are heavy, okay? Um, they um, are kind of round and domed. I made them coasters, but they had felt on the back and little wall hanging things. So they could obviously be wall hangings as well, but they came in that little container to hold them. Um, it was a full set, and so I saw singles of them selling all over. They were on Etsy as, like, wall hangings. They were antiques. Some people said they were from 1910. Um, some said they were from the 1880s. I My research says they're probably from the 30s, maybe. Um, so there were lots of con conflicting information. But I tried to give them every bit of information, plus all this information about the battleships, because there was a lady in England that had sold them before, and she had great deals of information. So I used all that, told them as much as I knew that I believed it was either a polymer or stone, um, and I listed them for $75, and they sold for $70. Well, they were listed on auction for $75, and the, I sold them for a bid of $75. I got one bid. Um, all in, they were in for $89 and I made $59 and 20 cents on them. So that, Hey, so just a point of reference, you can sell scrimshaw that is bone or tusk or ivory, as long as it's before 1985. After 1985 is a no, no though. Um, they will pull your listing. So make sure you know the dates and be very sure you have your information because they will go after you if they suspect that it is more recent because you cannot sell that in the United States at all. So just keep that in mind and don't list those things on um, eBay. Now, if it's stone or it's polymer or it's plastic or anything else, it's perfectly okay, but watch out for that. Make sure it's before 1985. Okay, just some public service announcement. This is another bolo I wanted to share. This is an Amer Animal Adventure Sweet Sprouts toy. These are sold at Target. Now, I know you think Target 
Walmart plush do really well too, some of them. So always look up your plush, even when in doubt. Because you never know. Like I, I found FAO shorts that I thought was going to be great. that was worth, you know, just a little bit of money, like in the teens. I found other things that I thought wasn't going to be worth anything that was worth a lot of money. So you just not, don't know. But there are a couple people out there. I'm going to put them down in the link. Rebel, the Rebel reseller. Rebel is a, she sells a lot of plush. She's kind of a plush expert, in my opinion. She may not think that about herself, but I think she is. Anyway, she sells a lot. She has a video about various different plush brands, some of the better ones to look for within the brands. Go watch them. They're very educational. I love them. Also, Courtney at Bolo Buddies also does Bolo videos about lots of things, but she has a plush video, too, about Build-A-Bear and a couple other plush brands. So go check her out as well, and you'll get lots of information. There are some great bands. There's also, um, just if you just search online and on YouTube, you can find lots more information. Eventually, I might get to doing those kinds of videos, but I'm not there yet. Anyway, this was a Sweet, oops, sweet Sprouts, and it's a blue dog with brown ears. I paid $1.07 for it. I have another one that I just bought. So I have another one that I'm, I I think I listed or it's going to be listed. It's not listed right now. Anyway, it cost me $1.07 and I listed it for $55, accepted an offer $40. Um, they were all in for $45 and I made $27.26 on that. So that was pretty cool. This last item um, is a Vera Bradley backpack. Now, I have another Vera Bradley in stock, and Vera Bradley's very hit or miss. Um, backpacks seem to do well, especially in pretty colors and pretty color combinations. Um, the blues and the greens and the turquoise and the pinks and the purples, those all kind of do well. Black and white, not as much. But, um, but the backpacks do better than the purses do. The tote bags do better than the purses do. The bigger the bag, the better they do. But I have a tote bag that hasn't sold. It's been listed for about... Four months um but the backpack sold pretty quickly so um i was all in for nine dollars and 62 cents i listed it for 45 and it sold for full ask they were all in for 50 with shipping and i made 23 dollars and 76 cents on it so those are all the cool things that have sold most recently um as you can see my sales have been pretty slow you, there's people that sell as much as i sold all month in a weekend okay or more so I'm building my business. It's very early on in my business process. I, as I said, I started the end of January. So we're only talking a few months. Um, I'm getting inventory stocked and I'm, you know, doing some downsizing within my own household. So that stuff, stuff's happening. I had a lot of technical difficulties this past month. My phone, I was on vacation for two weeks. Um, so I did really well. I sold things while I was on vacation. My store was closed. So that was fantastic. I've been cross-posting things to Poshmark and Macari, um, and I'm working on getting an Etsy store going too for some of the vintage stuff, um, and especially jewelry, because I have a lot of jewelry to list. But you can only do so much. And I've had, I take my pictures with a camera rather than my phone. I just prefer it, because um, I have my phone with me all the time, but I, for my my stuff is all for in my photo area. So my had I had a, little card reader for my SD cards that was corrupting my cards and it corrupted two of my cards with all the pictures on them. So I had to go back and do full inventory of all my clothing and all my hard goods. Um, I haven't even done the plush yet or the shoes, but I have to go through everything and then I have to pull things out of inventory and retake pictures. So I just finished, we had a big wall unit that my son just took that was full of books. So I took the books down off of there that I was going to sell anyway, and I'm presently listing books. Then I'm going to do the hard goods because those are the hardest and take up the most room. And then I'm going to do the clothing, and then I will go do the shoes because that's the littlest. And then the plush is the most, so I'm just going to go group through group and pull out the ones, take the pictures, put them back, and do the next group. So it's a big undertaking, and that does not count all the stuff I've got that isn't in inventory yet um, because I had to just stop doing that. So I have some haul videos to get up, but I can't do the, I mean, I have some shop video, shopping videos, um, shop with me videos to do, but I can't do the haul videos because I can't start that until I get some of this inventory under control. So 
I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But anyway, I wanted to share with you just some of the what's sold, the kind of, you know, the amounts of money you make from selling things. So you get an idea kind of of what is involved in, you know, um, I like doing this. I really do. It's very enjoyable. Um, it's kind of a learning curve, but, um, and I can see where you can, you know, make a good little bit of extra money on the side doing this. Um, but it is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not magic. Nothing's magic. You can't just do stuff and make money instantly. There's work. So don't expect magic. There's, I had to, you know, I invested some money in getting some things. I'm also getting rid of things personally within the household because we are playing on down. So it's sizing, but, um, you have to be aware of what you can afford to do. Um, how much you can make, how long it takes for things to sell, because things do not always sell very quickly. And there are ways you can help that process by checking um, sell-through rates um, on on eBay. Um, it can You can see how many are listed and how many have sold. When those numbers are very close together, that means things are moving quickly. So if there's 100 listed and 100 sold, then you know your stuff's going to move fast. If there's a million listed and 12 sold, it's going to sit a long, long time. So in the beginning, when you're starting, you don't always understand how that process works. So some things that might be in my inventory might take a long time to sell. They might sit for a while. I know people that have large stuff, large amounts of inventory and stuff that sits for three, four years before it moves, but stuff will eventually move. Um, but you have to have the space to store it and things like that. So you I'm trying not to accumulate, so I really have to be a little more cognitive of price points and watching time frames on things for them to move. Um, you know, I'm willing to sit on things for a while because it's some things, you know, you're going to have to to get the prices you want. But you got to have, your, you know, you have to know what you can do. So it's all kind of knowledge, a lot of knowledge based things going on. So. Um, do your due diligence um, that I started watching these videos from other resellers and seeing how they source and what they buy um, and, you know, ways to keep your price points low in the beginning because some of the thrift shops are charging up for things. Um, they think they're eBay now, um, some of them. And, you know, stuff you, you can't buy for a few dollars more because your uh, fees are going to eat it up and then, you know, you're not going to make any money. Um, so it's really a balance of knowledge of what things are worth. Looking things up, take the time to do that. Don't buy blind or you'll get burnt. Believe me, been burnt. Check and make sure it's not damaged. Check and make sure they're not holes. I mean, take your time. It is worth taking your time. Even if time is money, so you, you know, you got to be cognitive of how much you're making an hour, but you got to take your time when you're buying and not, don't overpay. Look it up. Do all your due diligence. So... I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope it was helpful and gave you some information. I thank you guys all so much for watching. If you like this video and like to see more like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for watching. I will be back hopefully soon with another video.